Joining us now is the Director, Center for International Advanced and Professional Studies, Anthony Kila. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TBC Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you for having me. With the level of insecurity that has uh, bedeviled the country, one would expect that uh, um, something like this, uh, talking about Amotekun, will be embraced. Yes. But we, we, we are seeing some level of controversy. This is generating, talking about legality, talking about even politics. Does this generate any concern for you? Well, is it being embraced or is it creating um, controversy? It depends on where you look at. The, the people of um, the Southwest, the, you know, the Yoruba nation, in, insipidly called Southwest, the people of the Yoruba nation are not in any big doubt about it. They very big majority are in support of it. The rally organized by the Yoruba World Congress, which spans not only in Ekiti, where it was um, rather popular, went across Abekuta to Lagos to Ibadan to Oshogbo and across the, um, the western region of Nigeria, really. So the people are for it. There is no major controversy. Um, is it perfect? The controversy that is generating has yes. to do with the legality and the fact that some persons are politicizing it, saying that 2023, that, uh, they, they, it will be a risk for them to have a candidate for the presidency. Well, now, let's take it one by one. Legality is determined by the court in Nigeria. If you refer to the Attorney General, is a lawyer who is working for government as head of prosecution, who has no legal standing to pronounce what is illegal or not, mm -hmm. is a man who has an opinion, is leader in the office who has an opinion. And let's be frank about it. Who has an opinion but lacks sensibility and care? Because really and truly, a good official of government would be careful of pronunciation, what it might generate. Because these people that came out here in these all over the country yesterday, they came out to say we stand on this issue Absolutely. We, behind our governors because we do not agree. And if we're realistic, the law should serve the people, not people serve the law. Mm. Amoteku is a community response to insecurity. It's um, a civil force that is there to gather intelligence and complement the deficient police and other security agencies. Now, you say it's a community response to insecurity. Yes. But um, a, a, a group, the Mieti Allah says, it's a way of attacking its people. The position of me, Taylor, is very strange to me because, if, you see, if not for the gravity of the situation, I would laugh at what me, Taylor, is saying. Me, Taylor strikes me as a position of an association of married women who are defending prostitutes. You would think that they should be by default irritated by anything, any act of criminality linked to headsmen. And I say it because I'm a headsman. If you Google it, I have a farm. Have a ranch. So, ordinarily, you would, suggest, you would imagine that they will be irritated by any form of criminality against headsmen or linked to headsmen. So, the idea that people who are known of that craft, of that trade, of being headsmen, Metiala technically is an association of organized headsmen. Mm -hmm. So, if they go out to defend the criminality of headsmen, I repeat, their pronunciation is like that of married woman defending prostitutes. But they've always said their people are not involved in... They said they were not carried along uh, uh, when this was, you know, yeah. to ha come, when they were they coming been, together they been to, come up to form this uh, Amotekun. Were fishermen carried along or were barbers carried along or were traders carried along? At some point in this country, we need to be very clear, mm. they are an association of trade. It, you know, it's like saying the barbers were not carried along or the doctors were not carried along. This is an action of residents. Any lover of peace, any defender of life, land, and properties should be happy about anything geared at defending life, land, and properties. It is only people who wish evil on land, life, and property will feel like a suspect. You know, but where I come from, this is like a saying in which you call a vegetable seller and saying, dear vegetable seller, I suspect your vegetable. And before you finish your sentence, he or she says, oh no, my vegetable is not from the dumpsters. What are we talking about? I mean, at some point, we really need to look at ourselves in the face and say, this is not right. But, I mean, at some point, we really need to look at ourselves in the face and say, this is not right. If anybody feels that Operation Amateku is not perfect, let's talk about it. Mm. Let's talk about 
those imperfections. Let us address the concerns and the doubt. Do, do but you, let us agree that it is right. Do you have right. any concerns about this outfit? I have every concern about anything in the world. But you know, but what, for once in Nigeria, I am more moved by the content than the format. Because Operation Amoteku addresses two major issues. It addresses security issues and it addresses democracy issues. Security issues because there is trouble in the land and the chief security officers of their state, with all their flaws and their nuances and their phobies, came together to provide a solution. It's a democratic solution because I can tell you authoritatively that for years, those governors did not want to do this. Mm. They were pushed and pressed and they felt the pressure of their people. Yoruba people and Yoruba leaders kept telling them, you need to do something. And so late last year, they gathered in Ibadan and they promised something and they've done it. So the people have to stand behind them to support them and to remind them that who unto thee if thou fall back. All right, right. Professor Anthony Killer, we have to leave it here. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Joining us now is the Director, Center for International Advanced and Professional Studies, Professor Anthony Kila. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It is obvious uh, that uh, the, six, uh, the governors of the Southwest region are not uh, backing down with this uh, outfit. Yeah. And uh, they are also talking about finding a political solution with the federal government. Is yeah. that the way to go? Well, it is the way to go. The, the six governors are not backing down because, as you can see from these um, solidarity work organized under the umbrella of the Yoruba World Congress, the people are behind them, yeah. supporting them and pushing them yes. to do it. Because, you see, Amoteku deals with two issues. One is security. The other one is democracy. <coughs> the security part of it is that because of the threat, the menace and the evil of banditry, kidnap and murdering that has been going on in their state. Mm. The governors for a long time were disorientated and they were trying to find harmony and dialogue and they were relying on the federal government. And the people, the leaders of the Yoruba people have been pushing them to do something about it. So they had to do something about it. So that covers security. But the democratic aspect of it is that this is a move that is to answer to the yearnings of the people and the demand of their people and their leaders saying mm. do something about it. So they cannot back down. Because on the, on the democracy it. part now, yes. some people have said it is a threat to democracy. Well, I'm very curious, you know, from these people saying that. As a matter of fact, if not for the gravity of the situation, I'll find it comical. I know some of the people like the Attorney General of the Federation who has not come out to vigorously fight crime when it was burning on people or to the Metiala people um, who was saying it's a threat and I heard something about the presidency. Uh, again, the Metiala's position, I keep thinking every time I hear him speak against this thing, they seem to me like married women who are defending prostitutes because by default, Metiala is a trade group. They should be in the forefront of fighting anybody who in their so name So invariably, crime. are you saying that uh, this Amoteko is strategic enough to deal with the issues of insecurity yeah. in the Southwest Zone? Oh no, it's not enough. I mean, nothing is enough. Everything complements each other. We have a situation where the police, the security agency, are understaffed, overwhelmed, ill-trained, ill-equipped. So anything to complement them is good. Amoteko is a community service but it's a civil force made to gather intelligence and complement existing force. The same way we take Megad in our houses and our estates. Because, the same way we use generators, because Nepal is not enough. The key word here, I'm going to take it as a beautiful, symbolic, and you know, um, evoking word. But, the key but the thing major there is issue for network. most persons is the fact that it's a regional effort. But you see, that's the thing. Maybe people need to go back to school. Never mind the legality and all these legalist things. The key can we take that away? Well, we can take it away to the essence that the law is made to serve people, not people to serve the law. If somebody does something good, and we think, I doubt it, but let us assume, for argument's sake, we think that it is at odds with the law. Now, people of good sense and goodwill who are in charge of the law will sit down and tell the organizers of Amateku, here is the framework within which you need to operate. Here are the areas you need to iron out not to outright like say, no, go back. 
it's an offense to his sensibility. So, do, of you, do you support uh, those asking the governors to yeah. sit with their state houses of assembly to come up with a bill to back this up? Well, they should do anything. I mean, that's their job. I mean, I, I teach my students. They, they should go to those and whatever they need to do. But I hold in grave offense. I consider it very offensive. The position of the Attorney General, who without sense of care, sensibility, or respect for others, goes out to issue a statement when he could have sent an internal memo to elected governors, or who could have, before they went out, told them that let's work together and get it right. Mm. Well, you see, we have to be careful about this when we talk about well, democracy. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Professor Anthony Killan, we'll leave it here at this point. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Well, joining us now is the Director Center for International Ad 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 Advanced and Professional Studies, Anthony Killer. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, earlier you mentioned that um, there's a collaboration now. This um, uh, Operation Amotaku is, is supposed to be, or is meant to um, ensure that there's a collaboration between the security outfits and the police, the police and this outfit as well. So it means that Motekun arrests and hands over to the police. But does it also mean that the security outfits have embraced Operation Motekun? Well, it is theirs to incorporate any complementary effort. You see, we should be clear about one thing. It's not that people just woke up one day and say, let's do Motekun in a country where policing overflows and intelligent gradients abound. Motekun is a child of necessity. It is there because the police, God bless them, they're overwhelmed, underpaid, ill-equipped, and consequently not able to police the territory as well. So the more the merrier and to help them. Amoteku is there to complement them. It is their duty, and this is very important to say, it's the duty of the established, charged, and paid security agencies to find ways to work with civil community intelligence gathering, not for them to put the onus on civil people to work with them. Do okay. you have any concerns at all about this outfit, Amoteko? Well, like everything human, and indeed every Niger everything Nigerian, there are some flaws. Mm. I have some concerns that some people are misinterpreting it. Amoteko is a beautiful and evocative in world. Because a, a lot of, uh, most Nigerians are saying that uh, there are concerns that this persons might be used as political uh, tools. thugs, or tools rather, if I may use the word, uh, by politicians to perhaps, you know, intimidate <coughs> their opponents. Their opponents. A lot of people have that fear that the Nigerian police force can be used. Rotimi Amiti had that concern that the police force was used again in once governor and river state. We do not, because of that, abolish the police force. What we need to do is to ensure that our fears and our concerns are treated. And that is why, starting from um, tomorrow, the Yoruba World Congress is launching a desk to all Nigerians of goodwill and free of hatred and mischief. So how would you want the state government to tackle that issue? The state government are elected people, if anybody has concern, and that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The Yoruba World Congress is launching a desk, starting from tomorrow, to say, if you're a person of goodwill and you are free of hatred or mischief, you understand the need to secure land, life, and property. If you have any concerns, let us know it, and we should channel it to the right quarters. So there should be no fear for people trying to secure life, land, and properties. Only the bad people should be afraid. So anybody who is saying they're afraid and say just cancel it, I think they're either ignorant, mischievous, or both. But, but there's, I, okay. Okay. So there's been a lot of furor over uh, this Amoteko issue now, yes. but has the conversation been able uh, to, has been out there enough to gain a general acceptance? Well, I think this um, solidarity work in the whole of the southwestern state of Nigeria um, under the umbrella of the Yoruba World Congress is a clear sign of where the direct stakeholders stand on this. These are people who in their land have come together to say, let's be our own keepers, let's do it ourselves, let's complement. So mm. clearly the problem is not in the southwest, you know, the problem because the governors they not just wake up to do it. They didn't want to do it, let's Absolutely. face it. They were forced, they were pushed, they were pressured, and they had to come up with a solution. So the rest of the country, the rest of the world, needs to say how do we accommodate it. If the problem is the law, let the law serve the people, not the people serve Seven the law. The law. All right, All right uh, Professor Anthony Killer, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you.